Welcome back to the No Green Thumb, No Problem series. We're going to start with the sunflower pattern today. You can find this on my Etsy. The first thing you're going to need, of course, is the pattern itself. Mine is laminated. You can print yours out and cut them for the pattern. You also need your glass that you're going to use, a glass cutting tool, some gauzer pliers, and of course, eye protection. You're then going to place your pattern on your glass. I use non-permanent vinyl stickers for my patterns because I use them as grind guides as well. However, you can just use paper and trace them out via a Sharpie, which is what I'll do in a second. I like to trace my patterns just in case the sticker comes off in the grind process. This just gives me a guide to use just in case. Again, if the sticker comes off, you have a guide that you can use for the guiding process and also the cutting process. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is go ahead and place or trace the rest of your petals onto your glass. Here, I've separated those out between small petals and large petals, but I'm also gonna use a ruler and a Sharpie to create a straight guideline to help me cut the entire time. Once you have that guideline, you're then gonna use your cutting tool to apply firm, even pressure and cut along that guideline. Once you have cut along that guideline in that straight line, you can use the end of your cutting tool in some instances or use a pair of running pliers to go ahead and separate those two pieces of glass. I'm gonna go ahead and do this again with my large petals. So you're either gonna trace out that pattern or you're gonna use those vinyl stickers. You're gonna use that nice straight guideline and create that those two separate pieces. Now putting it all together, I'll have one set of eight small petals and two sets of large petals, 16 total. The next thing of course is cutting out all of those pieces. The only thing not shown in this tutorial is the grinding process. Here I've already ground all of those pieces and no longer need the vinyl stickers for a guide. Now you can reuse the vinyl stickers and set them aside or discard them. The next portion, and arguably the most time consuming, is the foiling process. Here I'm using 732 black back Edco copper foil. It's up to you which kind of foil you use for this project. I just find this a little bit more reliable. Now you can hand foil or you can use a foil helper like I am in this video. One thing I also forgot to mention at the beginning of this video is that you would also need a fid of some sort. So here, after all of my pieces have been foiled, I will fid them and make sure that all of the pieces are smooth and are ready to be soldered later. The next step in the process is the flux process. Here I'm using Amorway Gel Flux and using a paintbrush in order to apply it. A small glass dish is nice, but you can use something else. And 
I'll be using my Hakko FX601 soldering iron set between the settings of 360 and 410, which translates to roughly 715 degrees Fahrenheit. So first flux the first side of the piece using that paintbrush. Be careful not to touch it. And you're going to want some gloves or other safety protection. I'm gonna go ahead and unravel enough that I can grab a bead with my soldering iron. And then I'm gonna go ahead and solder the front half slash face of my petal, grabbing enough to make sure that it has a good covering on all the sides. Once I've soldered the front face, I'm going to go ahead and pick it up and solder the sides as well. So after I've soldered the front and the sides of the piece, I'll flux and solder the back half of the piece as well. Now with this project, you're soldering every single piece individually before assembly. All of my pieces soldered I'm going to separate the piles into the large petals and the small petals I'll then go ahead and count out eight large petals to fashion the bottom part of the pattern itself we're gonna go ahead and arrange it into the picture or arrangement shown on the pattern so it's about four petals into a half, but you're gonna space it out into what you feel is best. Now with this kind of glass, I'm making sure that the textured side is side up and that the fat part of the pattern is closest to the center with the pointy piece pointing outward. Once I've arranged my pieces the way that I like them, I'm gonna go ahead and solder, tack solder them in place. And we're just going to solder those small portions of the petals that are touching. We don't need a lot, just a little bit, but I am going to reflux these parts just to make sure that the solder goes on a little easier because the temperatures have changed now that the solder has cooled off.
Off camera, I went ahead and cut out the center portion for the pattern. Now this is not going to fit exactly into the center. It is going to be slightly larger than it would be to fit directly inside. And this is on purpose. So what you're going to do is you're going to flux around the center of the pattern and you're also going to flux around the center piece itself. You're then going to place it onto the center of the flower and we're going to tack solder all the way around it. I like to just hold it in place at least for the first tack solder just so that it doesn't move around and slip a lot because of that gel flux, it's very slippery. Now when you're soldering in the center, you can either fill it in all the way or tack solder it. I feel as though if you solder it the entire way, it makes this piece more structurally sound. That is up to you as you're creating the piece yourself. soldered in, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to tack solder it onto the bottom. This is optional also, however again I feel it, it makes the piece more structurally sound. You want to be careful not to hold your soldering iron too long on one specific point because it will move the petals. And because this is slightly elevated because the center is raised off of that initial petal layer. Your petals could move in a downward angle and we're not looking for that for at least the first layer. So try to make very fast movements when you're soldering the bottom of the piece if you choose to do so.
we're gonna do is go ahead and clean off our first layer either using a wet paper towel with some soap and water or a glass cleaning cloth. It's up to you and your personal preference what you use to go ahead and clean the piece. I just like to use this first initial cleaning as um, trying to get as much dirt and uh, flux off as I can because it's gonna be harder to do that later on. But this will set off us up for success as we're cleaning the piece later. Next, what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead and start assembling the second layer of the pattern. I'm gonna grab another large petal and I'm gonna go ahead and place those petals around the first layer, alternating those spaces so they're in between those other petals at a 30 to 40 degree angle. It's your personal preference how you think that they look. Uh, I believe this is 35 degrees. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is first flux a little bit around the center just to give the solder some things to hold on to and help with the temperature difference. And I'm gonna go ahead and tack solder those petals in between the first layer so it's alternating so you can see them better all the way around. Now that I've gone ahead and finished the second layer of the piece, you can see and see a little bit of the gaps in between. You can use your soldering iron and a little bit of solder to go ahead and help these. These just make it a little more structurally sound as well. They're hard to see when the piece is actually completed. So it is just my perfectionism um, coming out in this instance at least. The next thing we're gonna do is assemble the third layer and the final layer of the pattern, which is our small petals. Again, alternating the petals around the pattern itself. So again, you're gonna hold it at about a 30 to 35 degree angle from the second layer. And you can even match these petals up with the first layer and you'll tack solder them just like the others. Once you have soldered all of your pieces, now it's time for the beads. For the large beads, I'm using a lava rock bead, which you can get at any kind of craft store. I'm gonna go ahead and sort out just a couple. I'm not trying to use a whole lot. These are just for the outer ring of the center itself. For the small portion, I'm gonna use even smaller glass beads, an E6000 crystal clear glue. This is my go-to glue. I love it. It holds the beads really well in the center and I just, I, I wouldn't use anything else. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick which beads I think would look best in the center. I'm going to use some lighter brown beads as well as some dark and some uh, black as well. Once I have all of my beads picked out, I'm gonna go ahead and put a lot of that E6000 glue in the center, a big glob of it, because you're gonna use this to mix up the beads so that they all stick together. You're not trying just for one layer. You want the glue incorporated with the beads. I'm also gonna use an applicator stick because I don't like to get the glue on my fingers. I would suggest you use either the end of the paintbrush or an applicator stick itself. 
Here I'm mixing up the beads in the glue so that everything congeals into one big glass beads glue concoction. And here we're just making sure that there's not too many beads in one area of the same color. You want a variety or, you know, whatever your personal preference is. We're also making sure that there aren't any beads on the petals themselves. Now that I've completed the center of the piece, I'm going to go ahead and add some more glue around the edge so that I can add my lava beads on. So we're going to add that extra glue and then I'll place the beads individually around the edge. That way it kind of defines the center a little bit more. The nice thing about these lava beads is that lava stone can hold scent. So if you spray like a perfume on your flower, it will hold that scent and your flower will actually have a smell, which is pretty cool. So once I have all of the beads, that's it. That's my pattern. Now you could solder this flower onto a copper tube. Um, I'll add some extra glue just for um, securing those um, extra beads. You'll want to cure the piece for about 24 hours, allowing that glue to uh, solidify and stay all the way. But this is the piece, and it's one of my favorites. I give it as gifts, and I hope that yours brings you as much joy as it does me. If you have any questions, please let me know. Feel free to like, subscribe, follow. We're also on Instagram. I really appreciate everybody's support and happy making.